Hello there, great beer lovers across this United States. We're actually going to be staying in the United States today. We're going to visit Nashville, Tennessee. Lovely little town. I've been there a couple of times. One of the best places to go here, good country music. Go to the Grand Ole Opry. Experience life down there. Some of the best music you'll ever hear. But we're going to be exploring a beer down there, or that came from there, called Gerst Amber Ale. Now, the brewery isn't Gerst, it's Yazoo, but we'll talk about that later. Anyhow, we're going to crack into this. This is going to be the Gerst Amber Ale. We're going to find out what makes this tick, and we're going to do it on... And we are back. We're going to be reviewing Gerst Amber Ale from Yazoo Brewing down there in Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to find out what makes this tick. I'm really excited about it because I do like Amber Ale. And uh, we've done an Amber Ale before. We actually did an Amber Ale for Southern Growl over here near where I live. Uh, this is <laughs> hopefully going to be just as good. I actually did like that beer. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be learning a little bit more about the Amber Ale style coming up in the beer specs. But right now, we're going to go ahead. We're going to crack into this because it's nice and cold and I want it to stay cold. Anyhow, came in a can. I got it at my local beer venue here. It was actually on a rack that was getting ready to close out. Now, it is in a can, so it's not really going to get light struck. By the way, that's another thing I want to talk about at some point, right? Is glass versus can. There's advantages to both, and yeah, I want to kind of cover those, but I'm not going to do that here today. Uh, anyhow, we're going to go ahead and crack into it, and I'm going to see if I can have you hear it. Hopefully, like the Murphy's last time. That was a good, good release of, of gas there. Here we go. Okay, that's not bad. Okay. Now, today I've got it in my little kind of English pub mug here. Uh, you're not going to see much of the color. I'll kind of describe it. I've got the SRM. That's the color profile of this. Uh, but I will be able to show it to you. Hopefully I can zoom into it. Anyhow, let's go ahead and see if we can pour it. Now I'm going to pour it a little bit offside here. Because it is an amber ale and it should be... Fairly carbonated. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit more head to it because it doesn't look like it's producing a lot of carbonation. Okay, not bad. Okay, respectable. Gerst, there we go. Um, to kind of give you an idea, we are going to be judging this again on the five categories. The aroma, the appearance, the taste, right? The mouthfeel, and of course, the overall impression. Now, let me go ahead and take a sniff of it. I always like to smell my beer. You know, I went to a beer uh, location the other night, and I had this incredibly great Imperial Stout. And just the whiff of it, just it just it evoked sherry, like, you know, port and sherry um, to me. And it was actually aged in sherry ba uh, barrels. So that kind of helped out. So the aroma. This is unusual. I like this. See if I can get a little bit more. I mean, the, the head has kind of gone down, so a lot of the aroma has left. It's rather sweet smelling. Okay, it's, re it's got a, a nice, sweet, uh, biscuity, um, bready smell to it, kind of like a muffin or a roll or something like that. It's not like a blueberry muffin. We did have a beer that had a lot of blueberry flavor to it. It was Pisca, if I remember. But this has a lot of good, a lot of good biscuit roasted malt smell to it. You're going to get that toasted roasted malty smell. Okay, so it's just, it's got a little bit of a, it's got a little bit of that sweetness to it that really stands out. Like I said, like a sweet muffin or a roll or something like that. Yes. Mm. Now, the appearance. Um, it's moderately clear. It's not completely clear. Okay. Uh, it does have a little bit of a slight haze to it. Not much. Now, the SRM, I believe, should have been around 13. At least that's what they say it should have been around. Let's see if I can pull down a little paper up here. 
Hopefully you can see something even close to that. Um, hopefully I can zoom in. Okay, so it's got that nice amber color to it, if you would. Um, it's a little bit more amber than you would a yingling. Now a yingling is going to be a lager, but this is going to be an ale. And much like we had with the Irish red ale that we had there with the Southern Growl, this is going to be much like it in terms of its color. Mm. Now the head has gone down a bit. It's now got uh, partly cloudy, if you would. <laughs> uh, you've got uh, some bubbles that are still remaining on the top. You've got some bubbles that are coming up from the bottom, and they're a little bit bigger. The ones at the top are going to be very, very fine. And when I poured it, it wasn't overly carbonated. Um, it only produced a very, you know, very short head, and it was very short-lived. And that's fine. You know, uh, again, that's not a measure of a great beer. But it does mean if it's to style. And I would say that this is pretty much to style when it comes to the, the head. So we've got the appearance. It's slightly cloudy. It's a little amber, copper color, I guess you'd say. Copper, yeah, a little bit better. Um, and the head, partly cloudy, <laughs> if you would. It's like a clouds broken up in the sky there. Now, we're going to do the taste. We're going to see how this tastes. And we expect that we're going to have roasted barley, which is what really is going to make up the amber color for this style. Doesn't disappoint. A little bit more on the sweet side. If you've never tasted plain malt before it's been fermented, you'll know that flavor. It's got a good base malt to it. It's got a good caramel malt. It's a kind of a caramel if you would. Uh, that's how I would characterize the taste of the sweetness. It's a little bit more ca uh, caramel, biscuity. Yeah, caramel and biscuit. It's not overpowering. It's not in your face, just boom, right? It's going to be a nice, mild sweetness. Oddly enough, I would classify it the same, I guess you'd say sweetness, as would be a yingling. I kind of like yingling. Now, sometimes what I'll do with that is I'll pour the beer. Now, that's really carbonated. I'll swirl it around to get the carbonation out, and then I'll drink it. And it really kind of has a profile of an ale. That's yingling. This kind of has that same profile as well. It's not going to be really heavy with anything. I think it's got about a 13 uh, bittering units, a 13 IBU. Uh, that's what they say, is what they've reported for it. And I can taste the hops. I think the hops are coming out, though, too. It's not incredibly floral, uh, which is good because it's an amber ale. It's not going to be like an IPA, or it's not going to be like something uh, that is supposed to be really floral flavor. It's kind of hops. And then you've got the malt. Okay, and it's it's not overstated, which I think is really important in this. See if I missed anything. It can stand to have a little bit more flavor. Okay, I will admit that. The more I drink it, the more I sit there and I go, okay, it needs to have a little bit more of something. I'm going to say it's going to have to have a little bit more malt. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have... Um, a lot of esters to it, so it's not the yeast that it needs. It just needs to have a little bit more malt to it to make it give it a little bit more of that malty punch. But overall, it's actually very good, very drinkable too. By the way, now um, the mouthfeel—it's clean. Okay, it's not heavy. It's not cloyingly sweet. It's not going to hold into your mouth a, a long time. You're not going to go. I need water with this. Holy smokes. It's very clean. The carbonation is good. The carbonation still re retains inside the beer. So whenever you drink it, it gets released. You actually taste a lot of that going up through your nose. Uh, you do get that, that smell. There's not a lot of aftertaste to it. There's not a lot of burn. There's not a lot of hops um, on the back end. It's not, by the way, and speaking of taste, 
it's not metallic. You're not going to have that slight metallic or coppery taste to it like one would expect. All right, you're going to have a nice, clean, drinkable beer. It's, I would say, moderately dry. I could actually sit and drink this all night. I would go to a pub, or I would go to a bar, or I would go wherever I go, and drink a good amount of these. And it's not really that heavily alcoholed. Uh, it's gonna, I believe it's going to be about a 4.9%. I'm going to see if I can find it real quick. Can't seem to find it on the can, but it will be here. Um, I believe it's about a 4.9. We're going to have that in the beer specs. So no worries there. Anyhow, overall impression, it's great. It really is. It's not the best beer I've had. It's not, it's not like the Southern Growl that I had. Okay, the Southern Growl had a little bit more punch to it, a little bit more of that good malty flavor to it. But this one here with this malt here, um, it just needs a little bit more. But overall, I would go to a bar. I would order it, and I would eat pizza with it, or I would eat a meal with it, or something like that. I could sit back with a group of guys, and I could just sit there and just, you know, I'm not going to pound them down. But I can put away about three or four of these and not worry about it. Okay, it's a good social beer. Okay. <clears throat> and that's my overall impression on that one. Now, we're going to have a little bit more history on the Yazoo Brewing and the Amber Ale style. We've actually done a little bit of an Amber Ale for the Irish Amber Ale. But this is going to be an American Amber Ale. And we're going to have that in the beer specs and we're going to have it right now. Amber Ale, a versatile and popular beer style, is characterized by its amber to reddish brown color and a well-balanced flavor profile that combines malt sweetness with a moderate hop presence. The hallmark of Amber Ale lies in its malt forward composition. The use of caramel and toasted malts imparts a rich, caramelized sweetness to the beer, contributing to its distinctive flavor. This maltiness often brings forth flavors of toffee, biscuits, and sometimes nuttiness, creating a satisfying and complex palate. While amber ales showcase a predominant malt character, they are not without a hot presence. The hot bitterness in amber ales is typically moderate, providing a counterbalance to the sweetness of the malts. This delicate equilibrium results in a beer that is neither too sweet nor too bitter, making it accessible to a broad spectrum of beer drinkers. The aroma of amber ales is often a pleasant combination of malt-derived caramel and toasty notes, along with the subtle floral or earthy hop undertones. The overall sensory experience is inviting, making amber ale an excellent choice for those looking for a flavorful yet easy drinking beer. Amber ales pair well with a variety of foods, thanks to their versatility. The malt sweetness complements the caramelization of grilled meats, while the moderate hot bitterness can cut through the richness of creamy dishes. This adaptability makes amber ale a go-to choice for many occasions, from casual gatherings to more formal dining experiences. Gerst Amber Ale holds a special place in the craft beer scene, known for its rich history and distinctive flavor profile. This Amber Ale is crafted by Yazoo Brewing Company, a notable player in the Nashville, Tennessee craft beer community. The beer pays homage to the Gerst Brewery, an iconic Nashville institution that dates back to the late 19th century. Yazoo Brewing Company revived the Gerst Brewing name, which originally operated in Nashville from 1859 until Prohibition forced its closure in 1954. By resurrecting the Gerst brand, Yazoo pays tribute to Nashville's brewing legacy. Yazoo has since partnered with the Chandler family, owners of the Gerst House restaurant, to bring this classic pre-Prohibition beer back. One of the most striking features of Gerst Amber Ale is its amber hue, which gives the beer its name. Pouring a deep coppery amber color, the beer captivates with its visually appealing appearance. Beyond its aesthetics, Gerst Amber boasts a well-balanced flavor profile that appeals to a broad range of beer enthusiasts. It's a beer that can be enjoyed year-round, 
adapting to various occasions and culinary pairings, whether sipped on its own or paired with a range of dishes from grilled meats to hearty stews, the beer's well-rounded character makes it a crowd pleaser. Gerst Amber Ale, style American Amber Ale, ABV 4.9%, IBU 13, SRM Amber Hue of 13. And again, folks, I hope you enjoyed the beer specs. We learned a little bit about Yazoo Brewing. We learned a little bit more about the American style Amber Ale. And we took a little bit of a dive into that. We found the beer specs for this too, by the way. It was 13 SRM, 13 IBUs, 4.9% alcohol by volume. Anyhow, Definitely want to say thank you for being with us today. Thank you for reviewing the beer with me. If you get a chance, if you can find it, definitely get it. Get a six-pack of it. Get four, six-pack, whatever it was. These came in single cans. Uh, have it with your friends. Bring it to a gathering where you're going to try beers. Have them try it. I think they'll like it. I mean, uh, out of 10, I'd probably say it's about a 7.5, maybe an 8. So it's very good. It's very good. It's not the top amber ale that I've ever had, though. Okay. Now, definitely want to say thank you again. Remember, subscribe, right? Ring that notification bell. Make sure you know when our next episode comes out. Uh, we like having you here. We like to grow the channel. And also, give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. We love it when you do that. It helps us grow the channel. And it allows us to bring you some great beers. Now, I've got one more American beer coming up. And then we're going to move over to another European beer. And after that, we may have some really cool surprises. Okay. Other than that, thank you again very much. I definitely want to say, you know, pick this up. This is the Beer Review Logbook off of Amazon. Take it with you. Review your beers. Write your experiences down here. Especially if you go to a brewery or you go to a tap room that's actually the best way to do this i mean you could do this sitting at home if you like or if you have a group of the guys over or a group of people over you have a dinner party it'd be kind of a cool thing they think you're really smart and again i'd love to be able to find it in pdf form um total wine if you're listening <laughs> okay put this thing out in pdf form could you please anyhow this is a total wine total guide to beer i'm going to be busting on them i tell you what um, also, the if you're in the upstate of South Carolina, uh, it just is in the upstate. This is going to be the upstate ale trail, okay? Uh, nice little books. You can also carry them with you, pick them up in any of the beer venues around. Write your experiences for that venue there, or in some cases of people that I know have been to every one in this book. And we're growing leaps and bounds. So the next one that comes up is going to be very interesting because we've had some dropouts. We've had some additions. And again, if you can uh, print this out, the beer score sheet from the Beer Judge Certification Program. First of all, it's going to have the five categories that I use, naturally. And it's also going to have the list of the off flavors, what you can do to diagnose what happens when you drink a mm, questionable beer. Not that I've ever had a questionable beer. Yeah, I've got some horror stories for that one. Anyhow... Definitely see if you can take this, print it out, right? Fold it up, take it with you on your next beer adventure, okay? And it's free. All these are, except for the uh, beer review logbook, all these are free. The beer review logbook is like $8.99 off of Amazon. I'll get the link down there in the description. Anyhow, remember... Gives us a thumbs up. We love it. We love you guys. We listen to all the comments. Um, make sure, by the way, you're not spamming me. <laughs> I've had some people coming in there with these crypto things, and they've had this large conversation. Now, it helps my channel that I've got a lot of comments, but come on. Crypto, please. Anyhow, again, definitely want to say thank you for being here today. All right. Subscribe. Right. Ring that notification bell. Make sure that you know when our next episode comes out, right? And for some of you who have been looking for the nice, pretty ladies of the thumbnails, it'll be at the end of the video, okay? I'll have them pictured there, so don't worry. You're going to see your nice, pretty girls. I like seeing them too, but anyway, that's a different story. Now, 
Thank you very much for being here. Remember, Prost! I can switch hands here. Chin Chin! Kenpai! Salud! Slancha! I forgot that one last time. And from America, cheers! Mm. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Peace, love, and beer. And now, for the pretty girl you saw in the thumbnail. Enjoy!